Thank you very much, uh, Vini. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, hola, salam alaikum, bonjour, and uh, stay safe. Um, I'm going to talk a lot, uh, mostly today, about mature areas that are characterized by salt tectonics and especially growth faults. And I'm very pleased to see that the new release of 2020 uh, ha has gone a long way to making this uh, a real possibility. Um, uh, VNA, do you have the, uh, can you put the, uh, um, yeah, there it is. I, I can see it. Okay, next slide, please. Um, I'm going to start talking a little bit about seismic stratigraphy. It's a 40-year-old technology, and when you look at it, it's all about seismic terminations, whether in regular space or Wheeler space or, next slide, uh, in the actual seismic. When you do seismic stratigraphy, uh, you pick terminations, you back out coastal onlap curves, and then you come up with your discoveries. The problem with seismic stratigraphy in areas with growth faults, it doesn't work. It's never worked. It's something we don't talk about in the industry. And let me explain why and why PaleoScan can take us to the next level that for the last 40 years we haven't been in. Uh, if you look at, uh, next slide please, yeah, uh, okay. When you have a growth fault, you do have seismic terminations, but as you can see, they are against the fault and you can't see them. The only way you can see them is with expansion profiles or using some sort of new techniques like uh, the Wheel of Transform offers. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> uh, and so all of those working uh, Mexico, Louisiana, Texas, West Africa, or many stable basins on the shelf, which are called ingrade, meaning the sedimentation exceeds the available accommodation space. Uh, next slide, you can see growth faults and flat reflectors. And look as you might, you won't see the onlaps that are demanded in, uh, in regular classic seismic stratigraphy. As the next slide will show you, with the proper Wheeler-based RGT workflow and PaleoScan, we can get past this problem and start to find overlooked deposits uh, in your backyard in mature areas, as this shows, and I'll, I'll get there in a second. Next slide, please. Uh, so, step one in this workflow is to build the geo model and let auto interpolation, auto interpretation show you where the correlations go around the faults. As the next slide shows, uh, quite often because faults stop uh, in laterally and at, at a certain depth above and below the fault, if you go to the next slide, uh, auto interpretation quite often will show you the relative geologic time next above and below uh, uh, on both sides of these faults. So that's a good first step, next slide, to help build a geo model. Next slide, please. And uh, next one as well. And here you can see a uh, geo model based on nothing more than what we just did. Now, at the bottom of this geo model is what I call the hard bottom and what it means everything above here is well behaved the mathematics of the geology are conducive to Wheeler transforms below that's not the case this is a profile next next please uh, the profile shows that what we're go ahead next one yeah that this hard bottom is really the base of a three-dimensional area above which you have what I call a Wheeler bubble. And here's an example. That is, you can see uh, the hard bottom and above it, the Wheeler bubble. Inside that bubble, uh, uh, fast Wheeler transform techniques will work. Below it, it won't. If we go to the next slide, uh, what you'll see is that uh, the step, third step after making the Wheeler bubble is to study the anomalous stratigraphy not using conventional classic seismic stratigraphy, but if you go to the next slide, you can see that the anomalous amplitude in this line from offshore Louisiana, uh, if you go to the next slide, you can see that because we're above the hard bottom, we're inside a Wheeler bubble, 
that we are able to use the advanced sequence stratigraphic techniques that never worked before in growth fault areas. The next slide will show a uh, enlargement here and as you can see there are different uh, thicknesses in the field accommodation space in the geologic time that's shown in the in the example and as I showed in an earlier slide this is kind of what you would find in a maybe a deep water setting especially if you use use the thinning parameters which show you that the abrupt horizontal um, uh, rate of change of the thinning parameter is the new way to do seismic stratigraphy. Next slide. Next please. So when you then say well you know I want to explore deeper uh, if you uh, back up a little well that's good enough if you say I want to explore deeper uh, then what you need to do is um, go ahead and use the new ghosting feature which is a very very important addition to RGT workflows and as you can see here I'm using that next please to go ahead and extend the hard bottom down to a deeper level now I have deeper geology that is well behaved in the context of a Wheeler transform if we go to the next slide you can see what this means it means that I've taken my Wheeler bubble and I have now expanded it uh, by extending the bubble to a deeper area and now looking in that deeper area I'm able to use uh, uh, RGT workflows and uh, fast Wheeler transform to go ahead and do the exploration that was not possible before why is that important if we go to the next slide you can see here I've made a model down to the extended hard bottom and the next slide is a real important one because what it shows on the left was the original hard bottom meaning everything above that red line seemed to be okay everything below looked kind of funny if you look at the right first thing you may notice is I've changed a little bit where the original hard bottom is and that's the nature of exploration as you move deeper and wider you get a better understanding of what you've just done and if you look at the foot wall you can see it's very different on the slide on the right and the slide on the left if you go to the next slide what it will show is this did not really show up at all before I extended the deep hard bottom and why is that important next slide uh, you can see and next slide too you can see that what I've done here is I've used PaleoScan to delineate a sequence boundary using fast wheeler transforms that classic seismic stratigraphy never would have found why is that important well here in this part of Louisiana the bright spots kinda go away as you get deeper that might very well be an undrilled low stand systems track which would not be expected to have bright spots I've now uncovered a subtle potential trap in a mature area that can't be seen without using this type of technology uh, next slide will show just again in summary what you want to do as a modern sequence stratigrapher using Wheeler techniques you want to expand the bubble that's your new job when you go to the work once you do that you've done the hard part the rest is easy uh, if we go to the summary on the next page uh, then uh, I can summarize this by saying that the problem has always been for in-grade stratigraphic systems and what in-grade means is the sediments are so great that you're not developing deep water or bathymetry changes you're filling up all the space uh, of the accommodation around the growth faults in those areas and I'm not talking deep water in those areas classic seismic stratigraphy has never worked the prize of solving that problem is that whatever mature area you are working with growth faults there are undiscovered subtle traps in these mature areas and now you have a shot at finding them and the solution to do that is leveraging the fast wheeler transform uh, next slide please and so the strategy is really quite simple and it's very different than the workflow currently used 
you basically dis break your geology into two categories. The first category is uh, the category inside the Wheeler bubble. That geology is RGT compliant. The mathematics of the geology are so well behaved you can transform them to Wheeler space, sharpen your pencil and find things you didn't find. The other category don't worry about it. That's everything else. Let your competitors work that stuff. You need to work within a Wheeler bubble. Next slide, please. Uh, so the workflow is you simply correlate reflectors and the 2020 release is so important, as are the new abilities to better map out faults. I, I hadn't seen that. That's great stuff. You define the base or the hard bottom. That's the base of a 3D bubble and you need to expand the bubble. And next slide. Um, uh, as I've mentioned, once you've done that, you've done the hard work and then with the fast Wheeler transform you can define and analyze the sequences in Wheeler space. And uh, last one, I'd do one more uh, uh, click. So what is the value proposition? The value proposition is within a Wheeler bubble, the fast Wheeler transform gives the paleo scan empowered geoscientist a very significant advantage over competitors, uh, particularly in near field exploration, which is what everybody's looking for these days. And I think that's a, a very significant technology. And I would even say in a few years, everybody's going to be working like this. It just makes sense. Well, that's what I have. There's no time for any questions, but uh, here's my email. Uh, feel free to contact me if you'd like to discuss this. And thank you very much. And thank you, Ellis, for giving me the opportunity for presenting here. Thanks.